when someone's going to be disappointed in your decision, when, when someone isn't going to applaud your faith, how do you make the choice at the end of the day to disappoint them to live a God-pleasing life? Simply by remembering this, if you're taking notes, that no other God can save. Now, your boss, your friends, your spouse, your kids, your BFF, your parents, man, they might offer you a lot, but there's no one else in the room who can save like our God. Let me tell you three reasons why that's true. First of all, because no other God can save you from being absolutely alone like our God. There are going to be tough moments in your life where you feel like you're in the fire, when there's no one else around to help you, but God promises to be an ever-present help in your trouble. That means whenever you're going through it, whenever you're in the valley of the shadow of death, whenever you're there, like enduring the chemo drip, uh, whenever he, he moves out because he doesn't want to be married to you anymore, whenever you feel l- like you can't stand the heat and you feel so alone, there's no other God who shows up to save you from that moment like ours. Psalm 46 says that God is an ever-present help in trouble. It might feel like the mountains of our life are falling into the waves of the sea, but God is so faithful. He says, be still. I'm the God who will never leave you and never forsake you. There'll be times in your life when you're in the fire and you might text a friend like, hey, can we talk? You got a second? And their their phone will be off because they're not God. (laughs) But every time you call on the name of your heavenly father, your prayers never go to his voicemail. He always picks up. Every time you need him, God shows up. Why would you serve him and put him first? Because no other God can save you like the God who is always there for you. Second, No other God has the power to save you from the situation that you're in. You might have some amazing people that can show up at the difficult times of your life and they might have empathy and compassion and share a little bit of advice, but they are not all powerful people who can flex their almighty muscle and change the circumstances of your situation. But God can. Matt, you might have some health thing as a kid that the doctors thought would never go away, but... And God shows up. Everyone might think, oh, this is going to be bad, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the furnace. And then God shows up and suddenly it's okay. Suddenly you're supposed to be sick and he heals you. Maybe there's an accident. No one knows how you survived, but you did. Maybe you even made a dumb choice years ago and God in his mercy spared you from the consequence of it. You got behind the wheel after a glass of wine too many and it could have been life-changing, criminal, tragic, but somehow you ended up in your driveway. God used this power to save you. Maybe you were sexually promiscuous and you made some really foolish decisions in your youth and, and just one of those could have changed everything for you, but God in his mercy spared you. Like God saves us. He heals us. He rescues us. He, he's so merciful. There's no one else that can do that. So if I have to choose to make someone in this tower happy, why not the God who always shows up for me and always uses his power for my good. Or most of all, finally, there is no other God who can save you from the fire forever. You know, the reason that Christians love God is because we have a God who saved us. He didn't just save us from being sick. He didn't just save us from being lonely. He didn't just save us from being broke. He saved us from the fire of hell. Can you think of any ancient story of like some all-powerful king and they bring like a rebel who is trying to subvert his kingdom? Instead of chopping off his head, the king steps forward and says, I'll die for you. That was not in Nebuchadnezzar's Wikipedia page. I checked. No, kings punished the sinners in their kingdom. But in Christianity, we have a king who is punished for us. We have a Jesus who didn't just jump in the fire to be with us. He, He actually jumped into the fires of hell in our place. He knew that we weren't always the courageous young Christians like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Sometimes in the heat of the moment, we bowed to Babylon. We compromised our faith. We we cut a corner. But instead of giving us the punishment we deserved, we have a king who laid down his life, who who paid it all on the cross, who, who went through his own fiery furnace and stepped out alive on Easter morning. Who would love us 
like Jesus loves us. Like a God who would sacrifice the only son that he had, that you and I, sinners, could become his sons and his daughters through faith. Now, you might have some good friends and, and your boss and your classmates might offer you acceptance, approval, or money, but there's no one that can offer you heaven, happiness, and eternal life like the God who gave up everything to make you his own. And when I put all that together, I mean, it might not be simple to put God first, but it's kind of an obvious decision, isn't it? Wait, I got to choose between you or the God who died for me? Hmm. <laughs> Wait, I can either make you happy, a guy who forgets his phone passwords, or the God who gave me the password to eternal life? Like, I'm sorry, your majesty, but nah. Nah, I can't. And I won't. And I hope you respect my faith. But there's zero chance that I'm compromising for you. You're human. And he's God. 